my review for Nine Lives. Nine Lives stars Kevin Spacey, Christopher Waltz, and Jennifer Gardner, and it follows the main character played by Kevin Spacey, who is very focused on getting his tower to be the highest in the Northern Hemisphere, and because of this, he never spends a lot of time with his family, with his wife played by Jennifer Gardner and their daughter. So because, and his daughter's birthday is coming up, so because it is, and he thinks that this could be the time to really connect with his daughter, he decides to go to a shady place and get a cat from a crazy cat man, played by Christopher Waltz. And because he does this, he eventually gets turned into a cat. And now he has to try to reconnect with his family because through the cat, and if he does, he will be able to go to his past life, which is cur his past body, which is currently in a coma. And if he does not, then he will be stuck in that cat forever. In case you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I hated this movie to an insane degree. <sighs> All right. Prepare for a rant, not a loud one, but I will probably be ranting very, very heavily on this movie because this movie is absolutely terrible. I mean, let's just start off with listing off the bads. I wrote down a ton of stuff about this movie because there are so many odd, uh, idiotic things that make you want to tear your eyeballs out. There's cat CGI used in it because obviously the can't, cat can't jump off a building onto a little bouncy thing, go up and end up in a car. So, Obviously they use cat CGI, and let me just say, this is some of the worst CGI I've ever seen. It's so noticeable. It's so terrible, especially some completely useless CGI that they had at the beginning of Two Kittens. And if that wasn't CGI, that was just straight up terrible, uh, just a straight up terrible camera. But it looked like CGI, and I swear there were these two kittens playing, and it looked so, it looked so terrible. I have no clue how that got passed by anybody because it looks like moldy pieces of cheese walking around which is usually what i equate to bad cgi such as doomsday and batman v superman look like a giant moldy clump of cheese that's just what bad cgi looks like Ugh, the cinematography oh my god there's one shot where it goes from uh, from the top of a building it zooms out and then goes into a room of another building and Wow, that was some cheesy and terrible CGI. I could not believe how bad that was. It was, oh God. And also the dialogue is hilarious. Not intentionally, but unintentionally, this dialogue is hilarious. In fact, that's actually the one good thing I can say about this movie, which isn't really good. It's a very funny movie unintentionally. It's got so many aspects that are so bad it's good, especially the dialogue. I mean, from the beginning, it's just cliche. There's even a scene where Kevin Spacey is sitting in a me in a board meeting, and he says, "Yeah," and then that's where they call it a board meeting. Oh, that's the best you got, screenwriters. That's the best that you got. Oh my God! And the acting from everybody. I expected better from Kevin Spacey and Christopher Waltz, and even Jennifer Gardner. They all give terrible, awful, atrocious performances. I mean, my God, Christopher Waltz. I don't know what he was doing in this movie. He just has wide eyes, and I feel like his character is supposed to be wacky, but he does not sell it at all. He's just like, yeah, so uh, you're a cat now, and I'm Christopher Waltz, and I'm getting a paycheck. That's exactly what he does throughout the entire movie. Kevin Spacey, yeah, I'm a, I'm the strong guy. Oh no, I'm stuck in a cat. And his voice acting was awful. It did not line up with the cat in any way, shape, or form. I don't, I don't know how that got passed. Probably because this movie was made in a week with drunk directors. That's probably how this movie was made. Uh, there are so, so many cringe-worthy moments that are laughable. Let me just name some down. There's a scene where Kevin Spacey is speeding his car down the street, speeding it practically at the top, uh, top speed. He's driving like this with one hand and looking at his phone, and he doesn't crash. No! 
No, if you're driving quickly and you pull your phone out, you are most certainly going to get into a crash because you are obviously not looking at the road in front of you. And for the majority of the part, the people aren't even honking at him. Eventually they start doing that, but what was the point of that? I mean, if, if, if no matter how rich this guy is or how well known he is, if he's speeding down the street like that, one, the police would take that into account. They would obviously see that, and he's driving down... Uh, I believe it's Chicago is the city. He's driving in some sort of huge, gigantic, big city. There would be cops everywhere being able to see him. Um, also, when he's a cat, he tries to turn an iPad on. And he's like, uh, uh, tapping on the iPad, trying to turn it on. And he's tapping from the wrong side. He's not even tapping on the home button that turns it on. He's tapping on the camera. He's still a human. He can probably see what's going on. He can see, oh... I need to go to the other side and tap on it. Even then, obviously his paw wouldn't be able to swipe the screen, but you still could have had him turn it on, try to swipe the screen, and then realize that he can't do that. Easy as that. Oh my god. There is also a scene where, okay, uh, the next two scenes I'm going to talk about are with spoilers. So it's, this the topic is probably going to go on for about another two minutes, so I just skip another two minutes because these are some of the worst scenes I've seen all year. Okay, there is a scene where Kevin Spacey, the cat, in his cat form, um, is over with Jennifer Gardner and her friend. Don't even get me started on that character, her friend, right? Um, and they're talking, and eventually Kevin Spacey sees her, and then Jennifer Gardner brings up how, he, how she cheats on him and was about to leave him. And first, the cat goes... Oh, wow, that's bad. And then two seconds later thinks, Oh, you know what I can do? I can go pee in the ladies I don't like bag. Really? You just heard that your wife was cheating on you, and the first thing on your mind is getting revenge. It's the first thing on your mind. The first thing. No. No. And then later in the movie, they eventually go to that guy's house, and that's when he starts caring. But I'm sorry, too little, too late. No. There is no way that that would happen. I'm sorry. And then, the final scene. Final scene of the movie. I don't know why you would want spoilers, but this is just big spoiler. So, at the end, Kevin Spacey jumps off of a building to try to save his son, who ends up just putting on a jetpack and shooting out fireworks. And he... The cat falls all the way down, and when he hits the ground, Kevin Spacey wakes up. And then he is alive again after supposedly being very close to dying. So then at the end of the movie, they go in into Christopher Waltz's store to ask him for uh, a dog. Which, one, why would he have a dog? He's a crazy cat man. Two, why are you friends with him? That makes no sense at all. It's just suddenly turn around, oh, we're friends now. And you know what happens? They pull out the cat that fell probably a hundred stories flat onto the ground. You know the movie's excuse? Oh, the cat's got nine lives. Oh my... How? How? Exp a cat cannot fall from a hundred stories, go all the way down and splat on the ground and still live. No. Not possible. You just should not have set the cat up like that. Even if they did end up killing him, one way more realistic, two, why would you have that in a kid's movie? I just, I don't even understand what they were thinking about that. Okay, done talking about the idiotic scenes, time to get on to a few other topics. This movie is very repetitive. It eventually just becomes the same thing. If it's 90 minutes, it feels like three hours because it's so boring and it goes on for so, so long. It is unfunny in every way. Not a single moment did I even smile unless I was laughing at how bad it was, which luckily I was the only person in my theater because I was laughing at the top of my lungs at certain things in the movie. And when it tries to be funny, it just absolutely fails. I did not have a single moment where when the movie was trying to be funny that I felt any sort of joy in me or any sort of feeling that, oh, I should laugh at this because there's nothing funny about this at all. There are, they try to go for some dramatic sequences and wow, 
Wow, those are just failed sequences. I mean, talk about fake drama. I'm, I just said that Nerve had fake drama and it felt unrealistic, but my god, this. Talk about just some very forced drama. It's, it's terrible. Okay, two more things to bring up. These are also two more scenes I forgot to bring up, but don't worry, these won't contain spoilers. One is about two seconds in which Christopher Waltz is seen dancing. I will never forget the moment where it cut to him dancing. One, it's in a very creepy, creepy atmosphere. Two, it's uncalled for and comes out in nowhere. And three, Christopher Waltz dancing is one of the most horrific things I've ever seen on screen. The man's a great actor, but no, he can't dance. Even if that was supposed to be intentionally bad, that was so so bad that it couldn't be intentionally bad, it could just be atrocious. My god. Okay, and then the final scene that I want to bring up is a scene in which there are two security guards at a desk, and they're watching on their phones, they're watching a video of, a, of the cat, they are watching that video, and... They are looking at it and laughing at it on a cat TV show. They are streaming from their phone. One, no cat TV show exists. I'm sorry, there's Animal Planet for sure. Definitely Animal Planet, but there is no cat TV show. I'm sorry, no. And it was obviously fake. I mean, it, it was called like the something somethings cat TV show, but you did not even see her on screen. So what happens is that the cat is approaching them and uh, they look at their phone, look at the cat, look at their phone, and then they suddenly, oh, look, it's the same exact cat. Yeah, because there are cats in the world that look similar and are not the same cat, but just because two cats look very, very similar, they are obviously the same cat. Right. So then what do the security guards think? Oh, you know what? We can call animal control. We can... We can make sure the cat is calm until animal control comes and put them in a pound. No! Oh, we want to make a cool cat video, so what are we going to do? We're going to tase the cat. <sighs> Tasing the cat is the smartest idea because people like to go on their phones, go on YouTube, look up cat videos, and see cat torture. Right. That is exactly what cat people want to see. And then they try to shoot the cat, the cat runs, and then he shoots it, and it's right at the other security guard, and it hits him, and ha ha ha. This movie is terrible. I could go on forever and ever, but this review is getting very, very long. If you stuck it out all the way, good job to you. Thank you for listening to my ranting. Nine Lives is an atrocious movie. It's terrible. Everything about it is awful. Surprisingly, it is not the worst movie I've seen. Last year, worst movie I've seen. This year, you had the choice in Gods of Egypt. And I can say, I know Norm of the North came out this year. This movie is the worst movie involving animals that has came out this year. This is worse than Norm of the North. This is the third worst film of the year. For sure. I give Nine Lives a 1. A 1 out of 10. Why doesn't it get a 0? Because... I don't know. Certain aspects of the movie weren't awful. To me, to get a 0, every single aspect of the movie has to be awful, like Gods of Egypt. So yeah, that is... Um, my bottom three of the year, obviously, I already said Nine Lives, The Choice, Gods of Egypt. And I can't believe another movie came out this year that was worse than Norm of the North. This has been such a terrible year for movies. I am sorry for any movie reviewer who has have to gone through this year. Because this has been a terrible year. Zootopia, Civil War, those are the only two movies that are redeemable and I give an 8.5 out of 10, 2 or higher. Those are the two movies from this year I love. Especially Zootopia. But besides that... This movie, this year, has just not been too good. Alright, that concludes my rant on Nine Lives. Again, 1 out of 10. Don't see this movie. Don't. It's about to be out of theaters. Just let it go. Just let it go on. Maybe, 
I don't know, I haven't seen Kubo yet, but I bet that's gonna be great, so just go see that instead. It's gotta be better than this. Alright, that concludes my rant review. I'm Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.